just back from the gym and ready to go straight into the rewards today guys and talk to you about the strategy moving forward and a few new deals because your boy can't stop doing deals so let's dive straight in Hey guys, we're going to be opening the reward of the one and only time Jackson Moleka Super Rare got me a reward and he is a goner. Yes, Moleka, he is uh, rumored to join an Egyptian side which are not covered on so rare. And uh, yeah, I the president came out and said that they are officially kind of trying to get him into their club. And they have been a huge fan of his for a long time apparently. So I can't justify having Moleka in here when his price is going to absolutely die. I saw the message that came out and uh, immediately like 10 minutes after I dived straight in for a deal, which I'm really happy with. So we'll talk about that in a second. And even if Moleka stays at Besiktas, as soon as Gezal is back, there's going to be DMP worries every weekend. I can't deal with it anymore. I'm done. I'm freaking done. So we are here with Mudic, Bayer, Trezor, Maxim de Kuiper and Moleka. Funnily enough, both of these guys are not here anymore. And the price pool for the tier one rare, guys. I already opened my reward. Uh, I couldn't resist. I let my wife open it on the phone because I think she's my good luck charm. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about that in a second if she actually was. But going into this tier one rare, I was at the bottom of the bottom, basically, right? I'm right here. Patrick Pfeiffer, Knauf, Marmol, Zarauri, Pavlovic, Silla, Azarkan, Ugo Chukwu, and Kone. I got to say, last time I finished at the bottom of a specific tier, I really wanted to go ahead and get myself someone around these places, or I thought I was about to get someone down here, but I did get someone way up higher. So I was thinking this time around, oh, Kone would be sick. Ugo Chukwu seems like a big talent. Azar Khan, a Feyenoord loanee that does really well at Excelsior as a forward card, who has good AA. I like that card as well. Palovic. Going into the uh, centre-back position alongside Soleil when Salzburg comes back, that could be a really good snack alongside the likes of Gindo. We'll see what happens there. And then Zarari, Burnley, you guys know I freaking love Burnley this year with so rare. And uh, yeah, I thought, man, that would be sick as well. So let's see what my wife actually did uh, end up getting me. It was Patrick Fifa. So... Patrick Pfeiffer wasn't necessarily someone I wanted. I really didn't think I needed this guy in my gallery. But I have to admit, going into the league table, Patrick Pfeiffer plays for the first place team Darmstadt. They have a total of 34 games per season. Half of it is done. Half of it still to go. They have only conceded 15 goals. And he is a massive part of their success when you look at their scorers. So in terms of SO5, he has an L15 of 63. And then if you look down the list of these players right here, there aren't many that can compete with that. Tobias Kempe is part of that. He is up there too. But man... He is the best in this team at the moment. L15 wise, he is the best one out there. And Patrick Pfeiffer's scores are extremely impressive. I mean, look at these scores, man. What is he doing? Now, obviously, sometimes he has these off games. And somehow, in this matchup, he played striker, which I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. So I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> so that's quite an interesting one, if you ask me. But Patrick Pfeiffer is someone that is going to be back in game week 341, which again is, I believe, next weekend. So we can look forward to that. The Bundesliga, the second Bundesliga seems to return a week after the actual Bundesliga. He's, he's going to be up against Regensburg. Regensburg is, uh, which position are they in right now? Regensburg is somewhere, am I blind? 12th. Okay, so they are in 12th position, only scored 20 goals this season. So they don't seem to score a lot of goals. Then it's Sandhausen, who are last. Then Braunschweig, who are 14th. Then who are you up against? Rostock. Rostock is in the ninth position. And then Hamburg, who obviously that's going to be a big freaking game. Heidenheim after that. They do have... So there, there's a stretch of like three to four games where he could be really, really good. Especially at home against Regensburg. We could be really relying on this guy to bring in these types of scores. And... What I really like about him is the fact that he scores goals. Like, this guy seems to be able to score goals a lot of times. In this season alone, he has gotten himself four goals, as we can see here. And even if he doesn't get goals, he has good scores. 76.2, 63.14. Then we are looking at the likes of 72 again. 84, 65, 58. Like, 
These are some scores that really, really impressed me. Now, obviously, he has some of these bad scores. Now, let's wonder about, are these predictable? So, Greuter Fürth was the match where he did bad. 10th. I wouldn't have expected him to do bad there. They were playing at home. So that is not a good sign. Going down to the 32, Holstein Kiel. Kiel is in the eighth position. It was a game uh, at home again. So again, you would have expected a little bit better. Uh, 22 points against Paderborn. Paderborn are one of the strongest teams in the side, in the league. And it was with a negative decisive. So conceding that, it's not that terrible. It was somewhat predictable, I would say. Then the, the other one is a substitution. This one is a red card. Can't expect that. Then against Schalke, which I believe was last season. So we, we don't have to look into that too much. In terms of this season specifically, when he plays, this guy performs extremely well at times. And that could be huge. His scores are really, really nice. And he has under 23 utility until 2024. So I think I am at least going to be giving him the chance of, you know, being in the gallery for a little while because I don't have any specific needs that I'm trying to go after at the moment. But I do believe that his price can spike again after that first great matchup that he has. And then at that point, we can make a decision. Do we want to move him on or do we want to keep him in the club? But nonetheless, pretty happy with this, man. I got to admit, like his latest, uh, like he was sold for up to 0.24 ETH, just latest one 0.235. He's currently on the market for around 0.24. Those are some nice numbers. I am happy with that. And we keep on yielding and we keep on doing it over and over again. And it makes me so freaking happy because I had a time during the summer period where nothing was going my way, like absolutely nothing was going my way. So I'm really happy to see that things have improved now and we have slowly been able to find our spot within within Soul Rare and understand the game in the best way possible, make moves left, right, and center, and still end up doing well in certain areas. So looking at all of this, my gallery is worth around 30 ETH, it looks like, and we have brought in rewards worth 6.8, which I'm really happy seeing those types of numbers, and I want to keep on doing so. I want to keep on doing better, and I think I've never been in a position where I was looking this strong in the gallery. I genuinely believe so. And that will probably keep on happening as we move into the future. I will feel stronger and stronger as things go. At least that's what I'm hoping. Apart from injuries and suspensions and all those things, right now, things are looking all right. So having said all that, let's dive into the lineups for the next game week. I am going to be doing this one very early so that you guys can help me. Also, I traded Jackson Moleka Super Rare for Jonathan Vieira. So just a heads up. I also included Imanol Garcia de Albeniz in this one. And the reason why I wanted Jonathan Vieira is because he is one of those types of players that just does extremely, extremely well. First off, he plays for Las Palmas. Las Palmas currently are the first place team in the second division, I believe. If it does want to show me the league table there. No. Okay. Let's go over to FOTMOB. Let's go Las Palmas. Oh. Come on, man. Can you go away here, please? Las Palmas. There it is. So Las Palmas, we are looking at them in the second position in the league. 27 goals scored, 14 conceded. Uh, the best goal difference in the league. And he is their best player. Top rated player on FOTMOB, 7.62 on average, which is great. Obviously, was out for quite some time. He was injured. Uh, those four matches were also within like, um, like just right before... Yeah, just right before or during the World Cup. Obviously, he wasn't available, but now he's back. In game week 335, he came on as a sub. They tested it out to see if he's fit to play. Next game he comes in, brings in 84.8, and this guy can do incredible things. He can hit hundreds. He can hit those very high highs, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing him do really well. When he starts, these are his scores. I mean, if you look at these scores, you can clearly tell we are looking at someone that is a special, special player. And as I said before, I am looking to branch out into those other areas in so rare. And by doing so, I need the best of the best that aren't named Messi, Neymar, Mbappe. I am looking for the ones that get great, consistent scores that not everyone really is desiring. You know, I'm looking for those that are exceptional in terms of so rare scoring but don't have that huge name. So 
That is what I'm going to focus on moving forward. And Jonathan Vieira is one of those first steps towards that. I'm extremely happy to have brought him into the team for the second half of the season. He's going to be kicking off with a game against Mirandes and then Huesca. I believe Mirandes is not too shabby as well. Mirandes is in... Where are they? Which position? 11th position. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. Mirandes could be a good matchup. After that, he has Huesca. Huesca are currently... Where the hell? 12th, okay. And then after that, Burgos and Lugo. Burgos, Lugo 20th. Burgos, I think they're doing a little bit better. Yeah, they're in the fourth position. So that's a little bit of a tougher matchup. But again, he is someone that gets great AA. On average, in the past year, 21.4 through AA. So basically, you're looking at like 55 and above in terms of his scoring normally. And you can see right here, like whenever he starts, he tends to do well. And I do believe he takes the sets, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he does. Takes free kicks, takes corners, and he's going to be back at it again. And uh, Alberto Molero has come through lately, and he's looking exceptional. And I'm excited to see what Alberto Molero, Molero can do for Las Palmas alongside Jonathan Vieira. And yeah, he's an exciting kid, a huge wonder kid on FIFA as well. That's how I personally know him. But having said all that, guys, Jonathan Vieira is here. And these are my lineups moving into the next game week as I don't have anything in this midweek. Let's start off with the under-23 pro. So, under-23 pro, we are rocking Costa alongside Mace Hilgers against Utrecht. Will be a quite tough game, but I think he'll have a lot to do. A lot of chances to get good AA score. Trezor up against Upen. Again, a great matchup. Banging matchup. First against 14th. Minans, it is the sixth place team in the league up against the 18th. Cambur isn't necessarily a team you should fear too much, but they are kind of defensively rigid. So um, could be a little bit of a tough one, hoping for a great AA game and ideally a decisive. And then Musiala, the comeback against Leipzig. I am looking forward to seeing that. So that is the under 23 rare pro team. Under 23, we're going to go with the stack of Burnley with Muric, Bayer, and then we are moving towards the stack of Benfica with Florentino Luis and Enzo Fernandez against the 15th in the, in the league. So that is going to be a great matchup. And then Odgaard is up against Fortuna Sittard at home. So that is once again a huge, huge matchup for this team. It actually looks amazing on paper. So I'm hoping that one will perform once again. And then Pandur, who is playing against Odgaard, will probably have plenty of chances to get great AA. I'm desperately hoping he doesn't concede three, because if he doesn't concede three, I can easily see him get 50-plus once more, as he did against PSV. Jared Branthwaite now has pushed his way into the team at PSV Eindhoven. Kukju against Ajax. Ajax do not... Like, I don't watch Ajax game in, uh, games and think, oh, they look scary. I don't have that feeling anymore. I don't know what's going on at Ajax, but they just don't look the same ever since Ten Hag has left. So for me, Feyenoord in this game should be favorites and Kukju has the opportunity to do well. But I got to say, I don't have like massive faith in this team. It's basically just to grab that ETH. So I'll be very happy with that. And then Xavi Simmons alongside Branthwaite up against Vitesse, who are like 14th or something. And then Florian Wirtz with the comeback game against Mönchengladbach could be very good. I really like the link-up play. I watched the uh, friendly matchup, uh, a friendly game of Bayer Leverkusen just recently. And Florian Wirtz was everywhere on the pitch and played some absolute key passes in that matchup. Alongside Klojek, he looked very, very good with Klojek up top. He had a great partner to play the ball to. So I really like that partnership there. And I'm desperately hoping that Diaby does not go to a team like Newcastle, because if he does, things are not necessarily going to be improving for Bayer Leverkusen. So hoping that Diaby stays because he and Wirtz have great, great interplay. And then All-Star Rare Pro. Yes, we are actually going ahead and jumping into All-Star Rare Pro. No, I, I, I thought about it because I looked into... Ch initially, I wanted to play Challenger Pro, as you guys know, because... I don't know. For some reason in my head, I'm just thinking in Challenger, I can win amazing under 23s. But then I sat there and thought like, as you guys mentioned in the comments as well, like, why? Just play All-Star Rare Pro. If you win someone that you don't like, just sell him. And like, it's that simple. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. And I thought about this team for a little while. And I do think this is a great team. We have Nopat, the eighth position team, Herenveen up against 15th Groningen, who have just lost 3-0 against Feyenoord. So I really like that. And Kulat is from Herenveen as well. So we're looking for Kulat to bring in the good points. 
If you look at my curlot right here, guys, and you see his scores, you'll be very, very pleased. Uh, we have the forward card, as you might know, and it does not score bad. Like, this guy gets great scores for a forward card. Every single time, I get 60 plus off of him at the moment. And I like it. I love it. And if he has one of those games where he actually ends up getting one of these attempted assists turned into a freaking goal, it's going to be great. So I'm really looking forward to it. Like four attempted assists there. Uh, three attempted assists right here. In this one, he probably has a couple too. Big chance created, two attempted assists. So it's just a matter of time for him to pick up that, um, that decisive. And I really love the next three matchups for Nopat and Kurlat. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And this team is going to include the Besiktas stack and the Hidden Vein stack. And then Jonathan Vieira as the differential within the squad. I got to say, it looks great. I really, really like this team. I think it has a really decent chance of getting things done. Let's also take a look at the price pools, shall we? Because I was pretty disappointed with the price pools lately. So Rare, uh, 375 in All-Star. Um, we're looking at only six getting star rares, down to 36th in terms of a tier one rare. Okay, under 23, we're looking at only three star rares. Okay, uh, 16th gets a tier one rare too. And then tier two rare is going to be achievable by getting into the top 61, which is quite a large tier two pool. And I've just gotten an offer for who? For Cody Hakpo. Immobile and Jesper Lindström. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let me just check this out. I've just found this out uh, through Net, by the way. My Trades is apparently a, a site that you can go into and see the trades on SoRare Data. I had no idea. So this makes things a lot more interesting to view. Um, no, I am not interested in that, in that deal at all, buddy. I am sorry, but that is not going to be happening. So let's reject that real quick. Let's go back again into the price pools. So under 23, we looked at. Then um, we should be looking at underdog. I don't have anyone, I think. Let me just double check here. Do I have anyone that can be played? I have Bayer. I have Marcelino Nunez. I have a bunch of super rares, it seems, that can play in this. And I do think I actually have Sildilia as well, right? Don't I? Where the hell is Sildilia? There he is. I could actually nearly play underdog super rare. <laughs> That's interesting to see. Do I have another uh, another super rare in my team that has like under 50 in terms of uh, being a super rare? Let me just double check here, guys. I'm getting distracted, I know, but who do I have? Nope, I only have those three. Hey, it is what it is. I just wanted to check it out. He's sending me another offer. What the hell? He's including Thomas Meunier in the deal now. Let me just quickly look at this guy gallery because he seems very, very desperate to get uh, these players. Let me see who he has in his squad. He has Sadio Mane. Ooh, Mane could be a good play for my all-star teams. <sighs> Sadio, Sadio, Sadio. I don't know. I don't know. Do I want Sadio Mane trading a Liverpool player for a Bayern player? I'm not against it, really. He has... He has been bought at like 0 0.8 lately. And then before that, his Liverpool card was picked up for 1.1. Why? Why would you pay that much? I'm genuinely uh, confused there. I know Mane has been uh, like not generally fit. He hasn't been moved into the starting 11 yet, but uh, he should be back anytime soon. And if he comes back for the game against Köln or Frankfurt, like these types of matches, he could bang Bochum as well. And Mane is, a, Mane is a beast, as we all know. I, I love Sadio Mane. I'm a huge fan of Sadio Mane, and I do think he would do really well. <sighs> do, I, do I just offer for Sadio Mane and just see what the hell happens? What is his price graph like EVE-wise? We're looking at 0 0.8. Oof. Mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, man. Someone got him for, yeah. Nah, I probably shouldn't. Let me see this deal. How much was it for basically one ETH? Yeah, I don't know. I'll deal with that in just a second. I just don't know if I even should think about going ahead and changing things. But yeah, going back into this, All-Star Rare Pro. This is the division where I feel like I have a really good team in. 12th gets Star Rare down to the 12th position. Then it pays down to the 85th. Now, 
obviously it's not going to be easy. There's going to be some absolutely incredible players playing here. Also, the Croatian league is back and playing. So that is something to keep in mind. And Bayern director Oliver Kahn on Jan Zoma deal. The two clubs are in a process. I can't say at this point what the end of this process will be. Hey, looks like Bayern is actually officially stating that they are going after Zoma, which is interesting to see. Zoma would be a beast for at least half a season or more possibly, depending on when Neuer is going to be back. We have the Turkish League playing. We have a Ligue 2 with only one matchup. Interesting. Primera Liga, obviously Benfica and the boys are playing. Eredivisie is playing. Bundesliga is back. Serie B is back. Why is this? Why the why is the price pool so small? Championship is there as well. Like JPL is there. La Liga Santander is playing. La Liga Smart Bank is playing. Liga MX is there. Premier League is there. What Serie A is playing? Like everyone is playing. Why the hell is this price pool so small? Am I am I expecting too much? I don't know. I feel like there's tons of games to be played, and I just don't feel like there's enough rewards. I don't know. On the 23 rare pro, we're looking at uh, down to the seventh position in terms of star rare. Let me see what the star rare, uh, like bottom of the pool is. Uatara has moved into it. Oh God, so rare, please. Oh, he has just announced his move to Bournemouth. Take him out of there quick, man. Take him out of there. I hate to see stuff like this. Joao Pedro is still in there, bro. This guy's injured for months. Take him out. It's been known for weeks. Bayezid has been dropped. <laughs> Taylor Harvard Bellis is injured for months. What are we doing? Why do we have these players in here, man? Get this fixed. It's, it can't, it genuinely can't be that hard. Surely it can't be. I don't understand. I really can't make sense of any of this. But going back into it again here, guys. Challenger Europe Pro obviously has 60. Under 23 Pro has 50 in it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I genuinely think we have bangers of lineups put in here i would be extremely disappointed if not at least one of them brings in a reward and i do think there's a good chance of possibly two of them bringing in a reward my favorites are the under 23 pro the under 23 and the all-star pro the all-star again as i said i'm only really expecting eth from it but there are some absolutely class players in there that on their day can hit hundreds so we'll see how that one goes but yeah, guys, that is uh, it in terms of the lineup. So moving forward, I am looking at players to bring in that can be very, very good for the club in terms of all-star. And I think that is exactly the direction that I want to take moving forward. Patrick Pfeiffer is a great reward. I'm very happy with that. And we're going to keep on building, keep on selling rewards, getting the ETH and all those things and reinvesting into things that we really want to have in the club. But yeah, guys, that is me done. Have a great day. Yeah. Peace.